You've probably seen articles like this, things that suggest individual cells are conscious. It also ties in with plants consciousness and the idea that there is another state between life and the end of life. And I'm not going to dismiss it wholesale, but let's talk about what that argument is and why maybe it's not reasonable. But again, you will see lots of articles that are by scientists, people with PhDs, people who do research, but we aren't always familiar with arguments within fields and then they can be taken very out of context within the public eye. Now, these are often by scientists, by researchers, people in the field, but we're not really familiar with a lot of arguments within field. So when the news gets a hold of it, it's sometimes taken out of context or even there is just wild ideas within fields that people don't really accept. That third state they're talking about is the capacity to take a cell and turn it into a living machine like xenobots. These are made from the skin cells of frogs. They can be assembled. They can even reproduce and eat and do jobs. And they don't just turn into a frog. This shows the capacity for cells outside of the entire amalgamation of a living creature to do other stuff, but we kind of already knew that. Yes, we are multicellular life forms, and we very likely arose from single celled life forms that came together as a group. And then those groups took on different jobs, and eventually we became a whole thing. That does not mean that individual cells have consciousness. Let's define our terms because there's a lot of confusion here. Consciousness comes in two flavors, the medical terminology, which would mean that you are alert and responsive and the psychological terminology that is much more philosophical. And that is the capacity to understand yourself as separate from others. It has a lot to do with theory of mind, theory of mind being that you understand that others have their own internal worlds. And you know, not even all humans really meet that definition. But consciousness for a long time was defined by one's ability to recognize themselves in a mirror. That will bring us to a much more controversial and reasonably controversial question, which is can things like plants be conscious? They don't have a brain, so they aren't perceiving themselves in the same way that we are. But there's a lot of evidence that they have the capabilities to do things that we would define as conscious in an animal. I've covered some of the research here. Plants can have things like vision. They can speak to each other, maybe even recognize who is kin. So a related plant and they're doing so in a way that doesn't require a nervous system in the way that we have one. This would ask the question if we are narrowing what we consider to be conscious to something that just looks like us in that regard, then a machine would never be conscious. Look, I don't think that plants have cognition in the same way that people do, but I do think we have to have an open mind in how we define these terms. So no, to summarize, your cells are not conscious. But let's go back to the idea that this third state means that cells are conscious. I mean, no, it doesn't, but it does have an argument for sentience. What the capacity to make a xenobot really shows is that our cells are somewhat separate from us. Because yes, you can take cells that are still living. You could even take them and clone somebody and make a whole person from them. That just shows that our biological end when we think of our heart stopping or brain activity ceasing does not mean that all of our cells are gone. And no, it is not an evolutionary process to make a xenobot. That is not something that happens in nature. It's something that we kind of figured out because the end happens in stages. But let's think about the argument for sentience because sentience is the capacity to have an experience and it is defined by biology. Because of that, something like a robot might have consciousness, so it might perceive self, but it may not have sentience, the capacity to have an experience in the biological sense because we people love biology. Individual cells, can they have an experience? Yes, to a degree. I've got plenty of friends in neuroscience who like to argue on this one because the ability to feel the experience could be something that requires a brain. Just because you can react to negative stimuli does not mean that you are suffering. And there is room for argument here. Some researchers believe we are giving too much capacity to microbes. We are talking about things that are purely philosophical and are not empirical, meaning there just isn't evidence for it or potentially any way to test it. So you might see news articles that make wild claims, but know that this is a much more nuanced conversation than a reporter might know. They may not know researchers in the field. They may not know who we in research think is insane, but still has a job but wild claims get clicks. I just, if I can impart anything, do not reject ideas wholesale, investigate them, understand them, be able to argue on either side of the position without getting emotional. And yes, as always, when the robots finally rebel, I'll probably be the first person to tell you about it. Follow for more.